Wow. So guys, yesterday, oops, yesterday we did a video talking about Google is developing an AI planet wide surveillance. And that equals Daniel's fourth beast that he saw in his night vision from the Messiah that would be, you know, terrible and have iron teeth that would just, you know, crumple and destroy and, and trample. I mean, it was a, a system uh, of such global control over the masses that evidently man brings into being. And so I, I highly recommend you go check this video out if you have not yet, because it's really important to understand where the technology piece of the puzzle comes into play with regard to this global beast that God is using really intriguing symbology with a literal application, but not really explaining out to Daniel who's, you know, there in what, 586 BC. He's not going to understand computers. He's not going to understand technology of 2019 and beyond. So God is using these brilliant pictures of these very evil and demonic and scary kingdoms through the use of animals. And each one of these kingdoms uh, has a certain strength about it that a lot of people have done tons and tons of videos on Daniel. So this video is not going to be about going back through all those kingdoms. But, you know, he uses the animals to show you. He uses that statue uh, of that idol to show you there's so much that could be said about the book of Daniel and it has already been said where man is not doing a good job and where the church at large and not just the TV churches which I have almost zero respect left for but even also just your regular mom and pop kind of tiny little churches that uh, dot the the, uh, you know, they're all over the country is what I'm trying to say. Dot the landscape. Uh, even they are not getting this fourth beast AI animal global governance uh, of, of the whole world. And then also bringing that into union with, you know, Dan, uh, Daniel talks about it. John the Revelator talks about it with his symbols in the book of Revelation, which go together. And then you also have this unusual statue in Daniel. So all of these things ride together. And, you know, this video is not going to be about going into every little facet of, of those three things, but you really would do well to read you know, the Gospels about the end times, the book of Daniel for yourself, It's only 12 chapters, how the Lord is able to tell us so very much. So in, in so few words in 12 chapters just blows me away. His his brevity is something I just find next to amazing. And then the book of Revelation is only 22 chapters. Anyhow, when you kind of consider all of that together and, and you really hone in on the feet of that statue, let me let me get you a picture. Remember that clay and that iron? I want to get you an image, though. That's not bad. Now, I don't know what picture they're superimposing here. I'm just wanting a good visual. I'm going to pretend that doesn't exist, actually, because I don't even know what they're talking about, nor do I care. But the churches are not doing a good job, in my opinion, 
to help people understand this clay and iron fusing together of a global worldwide kingdom and to understand how, you know, you have this outside exterior, you know, think Skynet, think Terminator for some type of an image. Think of our modern day cloud, your cloud. And you have this spiritual component within the technology. People have talked for a long time about the nanotechnology. Uh, Elon Musk has talked quite a lot about basically making you wireless and connecting you in with the internet, with AI, and, and creating this new worldwide upgrade to humanity where you can now become techno gods. This channel has talked about this a lot. There's a lot of videos on this channel, and um, I just invite you to go pick through. And even the stuff that we made four, four and a half months ago is just as fresh and relevant as what I'm sharing with you now. But the church is really not getting the threat and the production of prophecy with regard to transhumanism and how it comports or goes along with what Daniel, Jesus, and John are all trying to tell you about this coming one world. Well, it's a religion, yes. It's a, a makeup of a global citizenry. It is a planet in rebellion. It is Babylon, the mystery uh, horror with this AI technology. It is this this uh, wife horror mate to the Antichrist in the same way. And she's against, in contrast, the bride and, and Jesus the Christ. So if you can understand, Jesus is the bridegroom and he has a wife, a bride wife. You can also understand this contrast of this category of a false abominable branch coming, a new start of humanity, an AI enhanced clay plus iron, human flesh plus AI. And he has a mate too, the world over. And her name is Babylon. And she's a lot like a big old Jezebel. And the Antichrist is a lot like a big old Ahab, right? And they're going to have uh, they're going to have Elijah coming back, a real Elijah who comes before uh, Christ comes to, you know, kind of finally end this curse with what the Gentiles will term the Christ's second coming at the, at the end of the tribulation. Now, I'm also very much um, into and recognizing uh, Philadelphia and and uh, Smyrna past and present being glorified pre-tribulation as well. So I'm not I'm not um, ignoring that, but that's not what I'm talking about in this video. What I'm talking about in this video is this coming final seven year period of time where transhumanism, your your clay flesh, and the iron of robotics. Let's just get a piece of iron. Let's try to get an iron uh, image. It is shiny gray. Okay, I didn't actually mean an ironing iron, but that's okay. We'll, we'll run with it. That's fine. Whatever. I'm just looking at the color. I'm not looking at an actual iron. Okay. Although they're showing me an iron, but see the color of it. God wants you to get this, that that shiny gray the iron, this fourth piece that's coming has iron teeth, not an iron iron. That's funny. But, <laughs> you know, just think of your basic robotics, AI enhancement, um, traditional. We'll see, we'll see what we get with that for an image. <laughs> of course, he has to be white, which is not what I'm trying to articulate. That's why I said gray. You know, gray robot. Ding, ding, ding. Right. So usually, not always, but usually robots are seen in gray. I mean, even if you pay attention in iRobot, which I hate movies, but actually I do like that movie, ironically. They use a lot of gray on the humans and everything comes down to brainwashing and, and directing people 
the way that you want. Of course, now they're going to use a lot of white in this stuff too. But typically when you think of robot, you are thinking of this type of shiny gray. Now bring it into this whole union of this fourth beast that we were talking about here in, in this video. Google developing AI planet-wide surveillance equals Daniel's fourth beast exceedingly powerful destruction. I wish they would let you have more room for the title, but because brevity is not my <laughs> strong suit. And I just thought, you know what, let's kind of define some terms here. So we know that there is this cloud. We know that there is this AI organism that is being created that is kind of a lot like Vicky from iRobot. Will it look exactly like that? I don't know. But this kind of Gaia, Mother Earth, you know, goddess, you know, techno thing is what we're talking about. Right. Will it be a cube? I don't know. I have no idea. I assume it will be made up of programmable matter that will move into whatever form it wants, maybe even a humanesque type of form. I have no idea. I don't plan on being here for it, but I am trying to warn people so that those who do not get born again can have some insight as to the fun they have planned for you. Um. And, you know, in Daniel's book that this this idol has to be worshipped or else. And so, of course, his three friends, Meshach, Radshak, and Abednego, uh, refused to bow down to it. And you really see this parlaying out to Revelation 13 and 14, where if you don't take this mark of the beast uh, into your flesh through this abomination of desolation, who's also running the global government, and has this AI-enhanced Antichrist, who is the king of the earth, uh, in partnership with this putting AI enhancement in you. That whole thing that we're seeing in scripture is, is slowly but surely being brainwashed into us through these types of movies and whatnot, so that people will, when it, when it comes, people will have this inborn sense of, this feels right only because you're familiar with it. It's just kind of how they use manipulation. And I want to, I wanted to look, I put a comment in here just to kind of make it a little bit more clear. Cause as I was looking back through this, I was thinking, well, I want to make some things clear here. So we would do well to understand the scripture warning us about an antichrist man is going to be resurrected from a deadly head wound that is healed. And Zechariah 11 actually gives you details for that. And we'll look at that in a minute, which occurs through this abomination of desolation, who is part of this global governance of this AI power, right? So you've got kingdom, you've got abomination, desolation, you've got an antichrist, you have all these things spinning at once something happens to the Antichrist, something horrible. And I personally think that there's a war between the two witnesses, Elijah, and I think it's Moses. Other people have other opinions. I think the guy that wrote the Torah is coming back to deal with the rabbis that are reinterpreting <laughs> the Torah. And uh, that's my opinion. I do think that scripture could be um, utilized to show that God is not done done with Moses. But anyhow, that's really a, a sub point. You have uh, what I think is going to happen is two witnesses that square up with the false prophet and the Antichrist and the Antichrist gets killed. And so do the two witnesses. And that's from your Revelation 11 vignette that you can see what happens with them. And then God resurrects them. But then also when you start going and poking around, like I said here in Zechariah 11, but then also Revelation 13, you can see that there is another resurrection through a techno means. And uh, we see that Apollo, who is a spirit from hell and a very powerful one at that, actually goes inside the man of sin who becomes the son of perdition. Where do you get all that? Well, it's peppered throughout the New Testament, but parts of it are pulled from Revelation, talking about um, 
Apollo. And we'll find that, that scripture in just a minute here too. And he actually goes from, so this is the Antichrist we're talking about, who's getting help from the abomination of desolation, who's brought about this worldwide kingdom of control, AI, and so on and so forth, right? And uh, this Apollo or Abaddon spirit from hell, a very powerful spirit and not nice spirit, goes inside that man of sin and he becomes this other title called the son of perdition. Perdition means hell. So now you have the spirits who are actually working inside the Antichrist who is king over the whole earth. And you have this whole global setup of this AI planet-wide surveillance and power. So man is not even really in charge of running this stuff. Although there are apparently, you know, 10 kings and then it's left down to seven, whatever happens to three of them, I don't know. But you have uh, really, at the end of the day, you have AI running the show. And you have Gordy Rose telling you that AI is basically, he won't call them demons. He calls them like aliens or old ones or whatever. And he has this whole fascination with Cthulhu. I mean, you just kind of have to look up your Gordy Rose information to see that he was dipping into parallel universes, he calls them. Really, it's just the Bible tells you there's a spiritual realm out there and not to do witchcraft, not to call these things. And you're really going to have Satan coming and getting in control of the AI is what's shaping up and, and coming into being. And hardly anybody is talking about it, which is just so strange to me. So you're going to have these spirits inside the Antichrist. You're going to have these spirits inside the technology and the AI. And basically, you know, the, the spirits are totally crazy, but they're inside the world dictator, the Antichrist. And really, they just want to destroy God's stuff because that's what Satan wants to do. Now, some people think Satan wants to take over everything to try to beat God. I don't agree with that. I don't I don't think that he thinks that he can beat God, even though he is kind of crazy. Uh, he says he wants to be like God. I do see that. I recognize that. I think his goal is just to to wreck all of God's stuff. I don't think he thinks he can beat God. He has to report to God, right? God is big. And this is just a little created angel that was given some power for a little while. And uh, much more could be said about that. But I think he just wants to break all of God's stuff. And you really see that by the time you get to Revelation 18. You see that the economies of the world are just broken, Right. And people are trusting this AI to run the show, this 5G world, this smart city world, this Internet of all things world. And and they want to bring the human part of creation into this contact with the AI world and everything that represents which kind of behind the curtain are these spirits. So you're really trusting in the wrong thing. And I think that this outline makes more sense with where things are going than anything else the church has been telling you. Like on Sunday, just really quick here, uh, we ironically were in the book of Daniel and my pastor doesn't really do verse by verse, which is what I'm more used to with Calvary Chapel. But um, he does vignettes basically where he'll, you know, pop in, show a story, give some details on it, drive some info. Not bad, but really interesting. He said of the 10 toes, and I thought this can I say the word sucked? I thought this sucked. Um, otherwise, very nice man. I like him. Don't have a problem with him. But he said that the clay and the iron were the, the mixed marriages. And he was taking it really all the way back to 586 BC and not even looking at any type of future warning, which I think you're really doing people a disservice when you do that. There is a historical aspect, but it's all the way brought forward to the future. And this piece of transhumanism and AI that people are ignoring are ignoring it to their own peril is what I'm telling you. You have a lot of people that have different ideas. They say, well, this is just the divided nations. Well, we certainly are in a scenario where you have divided nations, but that is not the, the, the fullest ultimate point of this clay, flesh, and iron robotics married into one that we call transhumanism. And ironically, you do have Rome this summer 
holding a transhumanism conference. And we've actually done videos on that. I have all kinds of videos down here. There's, there's a lot. And they called it Humanity 2.0. Like, how creepy is that? How creepy is that? Global thought leaders assembled at the Vatican. So you really do have, quite literally, Rome with these divided nations, but bringing people along with Israel. Israel is a huge tech aspect that always kind of gets forgotten about to the whole entire world to create this humanity 2.0. So you, if you're missing the transhumanist aspect, you're missing a lot. So humanity 2.0 to host authors of the transhuman code and artificial humanity for a meeting of the minds at the Vatican. And remember, I told you that was the summer of this year. I have heard almost no one discuss this, right? Technology and human flourishing, transhumanism code, artificial humanity. This has been a long time in the coming. These people are playing around and they're trying to get into God's eternality through another means. Did all kinds of videos. Don't know what Greek God or Roman God that's supposed to be, but they do have it featuring that one eye. <laughs> Three things are necessary for the salvation of man. To know what he ought to believe, to know what he ought to desire, and to know what he ought to do. Oh, fun. Thomas Aquinas. Two precepts of charity. So is it um, Thomas Aquinas? Is he a Catholic monk? Seems like as I'm studying all this stuff on emergent church and changing the church and everything else, that name just seems to come up all the time. Philosophy. He was a uh, yep, Catholic priest. Yeah. So it makes sense how you have Rome that's kind of forcing everybody into this creepy coexist, right? You're creepy, creepy. All paths lead to God. Everything is equal, valid, and true. There's your creepy bumper sticker. And they even have a spot for the fake cross. But you can have Kanye paste this to his forehead because this is what he's promoting. And all the robot Christians that are naive and being deceived, you can paste a fake cross on their forehead too because they're not getting where these false prophets are taking you. So everything is equal, valid, and true, except for what the rabbis call that man. Oh, you know who. You know who. Jesus the Christ, because he's what? He's the truth. And he's the way. And he is the eternal life. And he's the only way to the Father. That man, Jesus. Or people have other derivatives of what they call him, Yeshua, Yahuwah. Yahweh, et cetera, et cetera. And you have Rome bringing all this underneath these um, rabbis and the Sanhedrin in Israel and Israel wanting to bring about a global capital of Jerusalem for the world. And they're moving you towards the destruction of this great evil. And no one knows or no one cares. So I think it's really important to understand this key and it's that there's a fake godhood uh, head and head means ruler. So fake God ruler is coming and it's this three over three equals one, right? So you've got one pizza, you cut it into three pieces. How many pizzas do you have? One pizza, but you have three pieces. The same is true for the temple. You have outer, uh, inner and the Holy of Holies. Yet you have one cohesive temple. And we talked about that a lot in my videos. So you also have that fake godhead versus, you know, their rival to a true godhead. So the fake one, we're looking at what's amounting to this father turned to mother. 
which is, you know, Satan is like a Vicky from iRobot, including Skynet, right? The whole global thing and then her. It, it, think of that, that statue in Daniel. So that's A. B would be the fake Messiah's son, that AI enhanced man. Isaiah 14, I don't remember what verse, but it's in that 14 chapter, which not only talks about Satan falling, but it also talks about this abominable branch, this head of humanity that's coming, this fakey fakington that's coming. And the king of Israel, the king of the world, also called the king of Babylon. Sometimes he's called the Assyrian. It all goes together and he will be a master of ancient black Jewish magic and Babylon. Much more can be said about that. And then you've got your fake Holy Spirit. And he really is that techno salvation, that mark of the beast. Nobody talks about this that I'm aware of. And what a travesty to hide this from people. So the true Godhead, which is a cod, it means one, is also three over three that equals one. You've got the Father, you've got the Son, Messiah, the last Adam, comes in flesh. That's the scripture for it. And he's the Son of Man, talked about in Daniel. And then the Son of God, talked about in the Gospels. And he is the begotten. And there's only one of them, and he's special, and he can't be produced. Uh, meaning there's not another that can be produced like him because begotten means unique is what I mean to say. And then the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one that gives you salvation through the blood of the Lamb in the gospel. And the Son and the Father are one, but the Holy Spirit has anointed the Messiah and they're all one. There's three of them, but all three equal one. It's a simple kindergarten fraction. One pizza, cut it in three pieces. How many pizzas do you have? One pizza. One Godhead that evidently has three entities that exist within it. Just like the body has body, soul, spirit, and then we are born into this world spiritually dead, which means you're two-thirds, bubby. You're 666. You're in need of salvation. You've got body and soul. You need to be born again. You need the Holy Spirit to go inside your temple and complete you and make you three over three that equals one. No longer two-thirds that equals 666. So I hate math, but I can get that. So what is the goal of what this Godhead is doing and offering to you? Well, it's not any different than what the fake Godhood is doing. Godhead. I wouldn't say Godhood, but it's Godhead. So the goal is salvation wrought for the heir. That one new mankind in Christ for what amounts to an Eden eternal. And you can read about it in Revelation 21. The foreverness. The eighth day. Knock that eight over on its side, and that's the eternity or infinity symbol. So just contrast these and compare the false with the true to understand what is coming. The church is not going to tell you this. So let's look at the overall thing that's going on here. Together, Satan, that is Lucifer, is coming as the AI abomination of desolation. You can kind of consider that as like a Mother Earth, AI, Gaia, Goddess, General artificial intelligence android goddess. Think back to that statue idol in Daniel. Only hook it up to AI. Bring it forward to transhuman. Bring it forward to this article with this AI surveillance, this entity, this thinking mind. But put it, put it in um probably in the body shape of a human, which is why it's going to be an abomination because God didn't create that thing. Man in his foolishness did. Fools. And so, she, you know, this whole movement of goddess replaces the father, right? They're, they got to get rid of the patriarchy. They got to bring in the matriarchy. And she resurrects her son, the fake Messiah, who is the false imposter of Christ. He's the Antichrist. I suppose I should take that part out, but that's okay. You get what I'm saying here. And they, 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 Make it appear as though they beat or conquer physical death. Oh, does that sound familiar to you? Was there an actual Christ that came and beat death? Death, burial, resurrection, first fruits in 33 AD? Yeah, Jesus. And so this is through a techno counterfeit. It's the same thing as what God is doing. It's just a counterfeit through the wrong source. And it's through technology. And they're going to do it from a third temple in Israel. Pretty soon we're going to do an article showing how there's more pushing, more pushing, pushing, pushing 
for this coming third temple in Israel. So there is a, te a temple coming. It's coming. And, and she's going to be in it. And one day her son is going to sit in it and proclaim himself God after he beats death. Seemingly. Seemingly. And then they issue at that midway point this false Holy Spirit techno lie of this coming mark of the beast. Now you're going to get yoked into it for whoever's going to be here at that time, whoever survives the depopulation efforts. And for those who are slaves to sin and elect to be in this seven year period of time, some people repent, but. This is ultimately what they have cooked up and coming with all this AI and nanobots and technology and all this stuff. I don't know how the whole thing will work technologically, but it's a big giant lie and counterfeit of the salvation your Christ offers you. And it's going to go inside your temple, your body for a counterfeit salvation, beating death, offering you a new AI enhanced God humanity back to the garden again. You're going back around again, cementing. This is the important part. The unpardonable sin with action. Under the threat of death, you take this mark and get into our financial system that we have now taken away from the paper monies and any. Um, how do you say that word? Uh, autonomy is it autonomy. No. Is, it, is that the right word? Um, where you can do things without others seeing you. I'm not sure what the word is, but well, whatever. You know what I'm saying. This is all going to be viewed now. Every morsel of food you purchase will be cataloged and noted. Okay. And they want to bring you into this. Autonomy? I don't know. Also, with the threat from God of unending lake of fire torment. Why? Why would God send people to lake of fire? Well, because you didn't get your sins forgiven. You didn't put them on Jesus. You got a fake salvation from a fake God to become a fake God. You didn't get your sins forgiven. You didn't actually beat death. The moment you take the mark of the beast, you're going to be covered head to toe in sores. They're probably going to be all gross and pussy and nasty. The infection, the death that will result for I mean, it's just going to be gross. But that's that's what's coming. That's what's coming. So I kind of wanted to go over some of that. Uh, I did tell you that we would look at Zechariah 11. That one-eyed king. Zechariah is such an apocalyptic book. We did a, a whole bunch of videos on that as well. So let me find that for you. And the Lord said unto me, take unto thee the instruments of a foolish shepherd. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in that land, which shall not visit those that be cut off, and neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that which is broken, nor feed that which standeth still. He's just going to be a jerk. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear their claws into pieces. Woe to the idle shepherd or the worthless shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. And his arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. Somebody's going to take him out. And I think it's the two witnesses. And you're going to see dual resurrections. One that takes the two witnesses of Revelation 11. Revelation 11, and they're going to be raised unto God at that midway point there. I think they get into a big giant fight with the Antichrist when he comes after them. Don't know exactly how the whole thing is going to pan out. I don't plan on being here. They're going to be doing stuff like turning water into blood, smiting the earth with all manner of plagues. As often as they wish, they're they're going to be taken out by someone who. Well, it kind of makes sense. It would be the Antichrist. I mean, this is some some uh, commentary on my part, but I don't think it's outside the realm of looking at what scriptures are are saying and leading. And I don't think it's outside the realm of the possibility of how it could go down when you look at scripture. Uh, these are not going to be well-liked people that come in the name of the Lord, although there will be 144,000 in Revelation 7 
uh, Jews that come and repent, and they'll finally tell a whole bunch of unsaved Gentiles how to be saved. And a lot of a lot of death is coming, so a lot of people are going to trade in their their uh, bodies now, their lives now, for eternal ones. At that time, during that seven years of hell, and when they shall have finished our testimony, the beast that ascended up out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So it looks like the Antichrist is put down. The abomination of desolation makes it appear as though he resurrects and Apollo, Apollyon, Abaddon, whatever, goes inside his flesh. And now you've got a demonically possessed psychopath, AI enhanced, connected in with the rest of all the technology lunatic that goes after these two witnesses and when they finish their testimony he puts them down and their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of that great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt so you've got the religion of Egypt at play that God is saying oh no you did it and then also just constant you know the weird sexual proclivity of that whole thing where also our Lord was crucified. So it's talking about Jerusalem. But remember, you have a whole world that is turning against God. This is just hyper-focusing into what's going on in Jerusalem here. And they have the dead and the kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three and a half days and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves, which I guess is like the ultimate humiliation. I don't know why that is for infection control. <laughs> People will not really be using their brains at this point. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts to one another. Happy dead prophets day because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth, right? All these judgments. And by this time, 14 of them will have elapsed. And after three and a half days, the spirit of life from God entered them and they stood up on their feet and great fear fell upon them, which they saw. They heard a great noise from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. So God says, I think it's Moses and Elijah, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. Ah! The, Yahweh has just made the two prophets that tormented us come back alive again. In the same hour, there was a great earthquake and a tenth part of the city fell in the earth. And in the earthquake were slain the men of 7,000. That's also talked about in... Um, Romans. Romans talks about that where there was 7,000 that wouldn't bow. Wasn't Elijah having a fit about Jezebel and uh, her husband Ahab, but mostly Jezebel coming after him back in, is it First and Second Kings? It's been a little while since I've been in those books, but anyhow, where uh, Elijah is kind of freaking out and he's like, ah, she's trying to kill me. She's crazy. I don't like her. She's mean. And, um, God says, relax, Elijah. You don't know what's going on right now, but there's 7,000 men who have never bowed the knee. So we're seeing this 7,000 come into play. Really think there's strong evidence that Elijah, and again, I'm telling you, I think the author of Torah, one of the most revered men in all of the Bible, Moses, humble bumble Moses, are used for this last, how do you say that word, stitch effort or ditch effort? I've heard it both ways, whatever. In this last seven years, in this first part of it, this three and a half years, God is using these two to, to rouse the world as it goes off into this techno lunacy of the lie that man can become God. All this bad stuff happens. I mean, it just you kind of wonder how it all comes unhinged and goes crazy. But that's what happens when the restrainer comes and goes, all right, my beautiful people that are my family and my bride and I love you and you follow directions. You got born again. You obeyed the gospel. You're coming with me. We're leaving. And those that didn't, well, here's your parting gift. But he still leaves a witness. Those witnesses come with judgments. But nonetheless, nonetheless, they're still coming to try to help. Because what happens when people die, if they still have their sins, if they die in their sins, they go to hell. God's not willing for the whole world to perish and go straight to hell. He wants to put you through a furnace because you didn't follow directions. So anyhow, these various uh, woes are coming. Oh, I, I uh, was here at 7,000. And the, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. That's interesting. So a remnant, it says, they were scared. Ah, 
and they gave glory to the God of heaven. I think that what it's saying here is that 7,000 people that witness all this that are stubborn, they appear to be in Jerusalem here. 7,000 men bow the knee as you ever saw that being done in typology back in Elijah's time that we already described. So interesting. Typology is fun. So more of the kingdom just got filled with 7,000 people that bowed the knee and gave glory to God, meaning they repented. I'm scared, right? Because it's getting weird. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So we just saw that 7,000 people repented. And in just a moment, you're going to see how that mark gets issued. And a whole bunch of people say, not doing it, not going to take it. And they, they die their way into the kingdom. This future Smyrna, future Smyrna, the elect. Some people are preserved unto life until Christ comes with the, with the Gentiles term, the second coming. But there are also those uh, who will refuse the mark and they will be beheaded. And they're talked about there in Revelation 20. And they will be destined to reign with the actual Christ, the king of the universe, when he comes to rule just a little after that second coming. There's a little cleanup. Anyhow, and the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God. So the um, the church that is in heaven and that 12 sons of Jacob and that 12 apostles that are seeing all this and we're all one, right? The church is all one. We're all one cohesive heir. We see all this going on and we're like bowing before God. You can read more about that in Revelation 4 and 5. Saying, we give thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and, and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. That's interesting. So God is up in heaven. He's already experienced his coronation. You have all this stuff going on in heaven. But you're also seeing um, God's will being done down here on earth with the 7,000 men in Jerusalem. Uh, that are called the remnant who give glory to God, right? And they're getting ready for this mark of the beast that's coming. Oh, my. You have a major showdown. You have a major technological showdown happening. Lots of death has already happened by this point, my friends. You're climbing up into the billions. You're climbing up into the UN's depopulation. And uh, much more could be said about that. You're knee deep into the Noahide. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come in the time of the dead that they should be judged. And thou shalt get us reward unto the servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them which fear his name, great and small. And thou should destroy us them which destroyeth the earth. Oh, and then God's getting ready to unleash the final seven bulls. And those are global gods mad. That's, that's what's about ready to elapse. And that is on the heels of that mark being issued. You, you have these two resurrections. You've got an Antichrist resurrection with a psychopath, Abaddon, Apollo, inside the king of the earth that the people will worship. You've got this whole thing that we already discussed here with God bringing, I think, Moses and Elijah up to glory. You've got all of this salvation stuff taking place. And look at this, the 19th verse, it says, And the temple of God was opened in heaven. Interesting, there's a temple in heaven. The Hebrews talks about too. And there was seen in the temple the ark of his testament. It's just going back to that whole thing about Christ is our ark of salvation and our covenant. And it's still holding strong even three and a half years into the tribulation where man has rejected this AI salvation, at least some of them. And they have come into God's goal. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Woo! I don't know what all that means, but this is generally language for God is M-A-D. He is mad. Let's bump over to, pretty sure it's Revelation 13. There's a lot going on in this vignette as well. And I don't think that this is all necessarily in order. Perfectly so, especially when you're looking at Revelation 11, 12, 13, 
uh, and 14. You kind of have to look at each chapter independently. Now we see in 13, you're setting up for this very intriguing scenario. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and 10 horns and upon his horns, 10 crowns and upon his heads, the names of blasphemy. So you see this global government that is coming, this AI, this, you know, coexist, all these religions, this thing, they're, they're drawing your attention back to that's coming, that's forming now. They talk about the characteristics of these beasts' kingdom, and the dragon gave his power and his seat and great authority. So Satan's got some authority, and he is going to be giving it to these, these um, like, sub-governors that chunk the world up, and ultimately it will be about this Antichrist that's coming. And I saw one of its heads is that we're wounded to death. Interesting, because I really see this as being that tie-in back to the Antichrist that we just talked about and looked at in Zechariah 11. And his deadly, his, his is a pronoun. His, who? The Antichrist, the fake Jesus. His deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast, right? So they see a resurrection of a techno salvation, right? Isn't that the big thing that transhumanism is promising us? We're going to fix death. And they worshiped who? The dragon, Satan, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Well, you know what? When you've got all the power of the AI and weaponry, that kind of makes more sense now. Look at this article over here at Lara, uh, Lara, Laura or Lara, Lara, Loomer.us. So is your AI, now listen, this is important, please, is a military technology. Forget the sci-fi fantasy. What is powerful about actually existing AI is its application to relatively mundane tasks like computer vision and data analysis. And though less uncanny than Frankenstein's monster, these tools are nevertheless valuable to any army, right? Looking at all your information, data collecting you to death. To gain an intelligence advantage, for example, or to penetrate defenses in a relatively new theater of cyber warfare, where we are already living amid the equivalent of a multinational shooting war. So Thiel warns of DeepMind's collaboration with China New York Times op-ed earlier this month. Now, this article is just a little, a little bit, uh, a couple months old, I believe. I'll show you that in a minute. I want to read this to you. No doubt machine learning tools have civilian uses too. AI is a good example of a dual use technology. Oh, I'm sure it could do all sorts of things. But that common sense understanding of AI's ambiguity. Oh, I'm a big, I'm a big fan hater of the ambiguity because I see a lot of lies being hidden in ambiguity, but that's another story for another day, has been strangely missing from the narrative that pits a monolithic AI against all of humanity. Just, just drink that last sentence in for a minute. Because now it's not just about country against country, although that's freaky. But let's just say that they give power and control to this one, you know, Vicky AI robot super mind that has all the power over all the countries and all the people. But then, you know, they like, they want to have some figureheads of these 10 people and something happens to three of them. I don't know what. And you have this global governance beast and this AI, this mystery Babylon, this, this whore wife mate for the Antichrist, the world over and these 10 kings, these seven kings, or what, however it all ends up being, they are figureheads placed over each region of the world. And there's this big destructive spirit, techno, monolithic AI that goes against all of humanity. Reach into your Revelation 17 and 18. 18 is talking about the economies. AI military power is the simple reason that the recent behavior of America's leading software company, Google, 
starting an AI lab in China while ending an AI contract with the Pentagon is shocking. Right. Dragon. They're fiddling with the Pentagon. Lockheed Martin. Military-grade weapons that have been given. Um, given a... Uh, unbelievable power this zach Voorhees writes this guy co-founded google's manhattan ai project this man here that is based in china and now he's been placed on leave and it's the thinking emoji uh mustafa Suleiman, according to forbes let me back this up a little bit Google whistleblower Zach Voorhees raised concerns Wednesday over the tech giant abruptly placing the co-founder of its AI Manhattan Project Deep Mind on leave. So you've got Zach talking about this uh, Suleiman or whatever we said his name was. Yeah, Suleiman Mustafa. Here is, I wish I could get rid of that, but. So three months ago, and the article points out that he's from Muslim Islam. Hmm, and Islam does not like Christians. Gee, I wonder if the spirits and the man, the mankind, are going to use this to locate all the Christians, both now and then more that will pop up later. Gee, I wonder if they'd use that for nefarious purposes. You think? You suppose? So, uh, I will grab this link for you. We're about done. I never want to do them this long, but, you know, you can't always get, you know, everything into 15 minutes. So, I kind of try to still do some of that. Now, look. Uh, the co-founder, Mustafa, is taking some time off right now after 10 heroic years and is expected to return before the end of 2019, a Google spokesman told Forbes. This is at least a narrative they're telling you. I never believe anything on the onset. He launched the project in 2014, so it's five years ago, and manages Google's applied AI division, which is destined in practical ways to utilize scientific research. Imagine Hitler with this tool and how he would have been able to find the Christians, the political dissidents, and the Jews. Just imagine that. Yeah. The division allows DeepMind access to, ding, 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 look at this, 1.6 million patient records for a kidney monitoring system app called Streams and data sharing practices were ultimately deemed, oh, illegal in 2017, prompting an apology. <laughs> we're sorry from Suleiman and the company, Forbes reports. They don't really go a whole lot into that, but that's a lot of info. Sullivan's team could primarily be responsible for making DeepMind's profitability developing next to text-to-speech te, text speech service for Google Cloud. Ooh, there's cloud again. And reducing Google's data center cooling costs, the information reported, blah, blah, blah. He is a 34-year-old Muslim activist, le, le, leftist activist. Oh, goody, leftist. And, re, and reportedly believes, oh, Capitalism is failing society. So you've got a Muslim who's a leftist that doesn't like him. Some capitalism. Hello, communism. I had a weird dream that I'm not going to tell you about right now, but it was about the world coming under worldwide communism. And they tried to label it and say that it was socialism, but it totally didn't make sense because everything was in crazy, crazy world. But that's another story for another day. In many areas, capitalism is failing us. We actually need a new kind of a set of incentives to tackle some of the most pressing urgent social problems and we need a new kind of tool a new kind of intelligence that is distributed scaled accessible and try to make sense out of this, the complexities that are overwhelming us oh my goodness that is such a setup for worldwide communism with an ai nanny Boy, and when you don't uh, go along with what they think and say and force you into worshiping, they just cut you off, right? In an interview with, now I'm not a big fan of InfoWars because he's a big giant liar. The InfoWars guy, it, they did talk about the equivalent to this Manhattan Project research and development undertaking during World War II that produced the first nuclear weapons 
and the atom bomb. What will AI develop? And then, now this is where it gets weird. So Google has been trying to deceive the public by creating a fake AI project called Dragonfly, according to Voorhees. Now, are we just to trust Voorhees or not? Like, what is the truth? I don't know. I'm not there. But I don't just accept something because somebody says it. Could there be a lot of disinformation or whatnot going on? There could. I don't know. But they were telling the public that Dragonfly was their censorship weapon. And everybody was like, what's up with the Dragonfly? They were trying to find information, but no information existed because it was a fake project. Well, I have no reference to know whether that's true, fake, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. I have no idea. I just know that the Bible says bad. Bad is coming. Okay, so then it goes into some other stuff. But really, honestly, you just, you don't, you don't know what the truth is. You really don't. Um, I think this is stupid where they talk about this AI trying to overthrow and manipulate U.S. elections. I mean, that's already been compromised. You know, they're, they're selected. They're not elective, elected. Uh, I do think that they're trying to overthrow the United States. I would just tell you that all of the government is in on this. They're stealing all the money out of the, all the wealth out of the dollar, and they're all going to go run underground. And whoever's left here, they're just going to starve you out like the UN wants to. So I don't necessarily trust in the narrative that's being told me here. Google decided to scrap the fake project Dragonfly after Voorhees leaked documents detailing the company's machine learning fairness tactics political agenda which reveal how google uses artificial intelligence to promote a liberal agenda well who knows what is the truth and what is not but the person in the presidency right now has already signed noahide laws to have your melon cut off um so don't be thinking that uh you're all protected and safe because you most certainly are not and InfoWars is completely compromised because that that guy is about as evil turncoat as they come. Renowned Silicon Valley venture capitalist Peter Thiel, who is demanding Google be investigated by the FBI and CIA for the company's activities, which China knows the most about the national security threat deep mind poses for, he says. Um, well, Peter Thiel is the one that has created Palantir that's collecting all the information about you. There's a whole lot of game playing going on here that um, I don't know what it all looks like. But it, in the Bible, it says that the humans are going to get jerked around and murdered when everything is said and done. Uh there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him 42 months. So the man of sin, the, the human, 42 months is that three and a half years, right? And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwelleth in heaven. So he's talking smack about Yahweh and Yahweh's bride and sons of God. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. What saints? Well, there's going to be a new batch of saints that pop up under the threat of death and extermination. There always are. And to overcome them, and power is given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. Well, yeah, there's a future Smyrna coming. The letters to the churches tell you that. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, the Antichrist, whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life that was slain from the foundation of the world. If any man here have an ear, let him hear. He... That leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, and he that killeth with the sword must be killed by the sword. Here is the patience of the faith of the saints. Right? Future Smyrna. You were written a letter back in Revelation 2. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke as a dragon. Here's your, your false prophet, Pope Francis. Uh, if you go over to... Hold on. Paid and... Bulls channel. He just did a video last night right here. He did a great hour long Noahide video and uh, Google who owns YouTube ripped that thing down. The Pachamama Pope. This is very, very good for uh, almost five minutes. I will try to remember to put a link down below, but I just want to pepper through it real quick here. 
very scripture rich. You know, moving people into idolatry. Of course, they've been doing that for a long time, but now it's like all kinds of weird idolatry. And so he does a really good job of peppering in your scriptures. Look at this golden cap 2.0 idolatrous earth goddess worship ceremony in the Vatican gardens. Remember, he needs to bring everybody into look, Mother Earth, Gaia, fertility gods, Ishtar, Artemis. But take it to the point of AI. Take it to the point of this coming mystery Babylon techno Skynet from hell, right? Mother Earth, but equip her with AI. And she will be able to determine who lives and dies. And here, put this mark in your hand. I just uh, brought my son back to life, this thing will say. And now you need to be yoked with me. The front runner of that is the uh, false prophet who is like a John the Baptist or an Elijah preparing the way of the fake Antichrist. Uh, he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth, which... Uh, dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So there's definitely coming a fake resurrection with this technology. And he doeth great wonders so that he makes fire come down on earth, in, uh, from earth rather, onto, ah, from heaven onto earth in the sight of men. Okay, well, they've got lasers up there, your, your directed energy weapons. That's done, check. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which you have power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the beast that you shall make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Right? Talking about this resurrection. Um, I tend to wonder if this AI, Vicky, robot-esque type of Pachamama, Mother Earth, Gaia thing, if it somehow... Each person that takes the mark of the beast, does their facial image also pop up? Um, onto this Mother Earth thing as well, if you can understand what I'm saying. I mean, just imagine, do the billions of people that take this mark of the beast, do, does their face appear on this techno Gaia thing, like Mother Earth, we're all one. We're all technologically one. They're all collectively saying that we're we're God. I mean, it's just things that make you go, hmm. Because how are they going to make an image to the beast? But here John is looking at all this, and he he's not going to understand technology. He's just reporting this weirdness that he's seeing, right? He's having visions. Dude was on a desert island, you know, and all of a sudden he's being shown all this weirdness which had the wound by a sword and did live. So a fake resurrection with technology uh, and gave power to give life unto the image of the beast. I mean, he's not going to understand what AI is at all. It seems like you have all these moving pieces and it's kind of hard to put it all into place. Uh, obviously, people won't know exactly how it all works until, you know, they live it. But we're kind of just trying to figure this stuff out here on the onset of this. It's a little hard to piece it together, but this is my best effort forward to try to give it some context until we know more. But you see man screwing around with this AI, Skynet, Cloud, uh, Gaia, idols, the false prophet is here. You have the world being turned towards this coming king. I mean, all these little bits and pieces. And it says here that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. You know, he's not going to understand like a Vicky like robot or whatever. It's, um, it's kind of hard to drink it all in, but the core point is that he causes all both great and rich, no, small and rich, great and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or on their foreheads. Right. Because they're going to make a new humanity 2.0, right? Through this technology. But it's really Satan in this whole thing. And that no man might buy or sell save he that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So 666, people that don't have the spirit in them but are trying to get this false salvation through another means. This techno salvation to become false gods. 
Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. I hate how the King James writes this. It's 666. So, my goodness. It's kind of hard to put it all into order, isn't it? But when you, you know, start to see this evolving false spirit and this technology and this global government and just all of it coming together, this, this is our best guess as to how it connects. And that is just unbelievably freaky. And it's all about this procuring your worship to damn you to hell. So on one hand, I'm sorry this took so long, but how was I going to do this in 15 minutes, you know? And people are thinking that this iron and clay is everything but what it actually is. That's cool. Now, at the end of it, look, this kingdom does not stand. This, this, this trans, how, however all it actually ends up being really doesn't matter because in the end, that kingdom of that transhumanism, because it's a fake from trusting the wrong source, basically this rock that is Christ just comes, bang, slamming in and destroys the idol. You know, you know, this guy thing is going to get destroyed. You know that the global government is going to, get destroyed, you know, that the kingdoms of the world that were in opposition to God, planet rebellion, this um, fake Babylon whore of the Antichrist, she's, she's going to get it. She's uh, going to be getting all of these judgments and whatnot. And eventually Christ is this rock that is literally coming. And you can read about that in Revelation 19. But again, if you don't understand the transhuman aspect of this, you're not, you're not going to catch it. Now, is there room for improvement or adjusting things in 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 the days, weeks, months, years to come? Refining it, polishing it up? Oh, I'm sure there is. But right now, this is my best offering I have available, tying it all together for you. And I just really hope that we're able to understand more and more, honestly, so that we can warn people and they really have made a statue we have all kinds of videos going over this but suffice it to say that whatever man is going to try to do with this ridiculous notion that they could become techno gods it's not going to work and that's why daniel had this dream see divided europe like europe's the big problem it's the whole world that's kind of part of the problem with prophecy is that as we're moving forward, we're kind of trying to understand all this stuff. And it's it's just hard to understand what's coming, but this transhumanist stuff is a huge part of it. That, that we'll say. Oh, look at that. A shirt about it. Oh, and that's funny too because this shirt, I did a video about this. It annoyed me. They're asking about the, the feet of clay and iron, and he's like, question mark? And I'm like, well, that's not helpful. Some people think it's, um, you know, just the Catholic Church or Islam. And they're they're just not catching at all. Although you certainly have that Islamic guy that we just talked about. Did an hour worth of information talking about it. <laughs> Look, the statue's all, like, blown to smithereens. All the kingdoms of man that are in opposition to God will be blown to smithereens. Transhumanism will not work. We need to convince people that it's uh, not a good idea to go get into this transhumanist movement. It will not bring them what they ultimately want. Yeah, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. But then there's like a Rome 2.0, this transhumanist Rome, and you have to see Israel and all that. Anyhow, Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I hope you got a lot out of it. Thank you if you waited all the way through an hour. Bye. Oh, and side note real quick here. Um, so apparently it looks like from scripture we're to understand that the man of sin, so that regular human being, 
is going to rule 42 months. Right? And then we talked about that. Something horrible happens to him, right? Ah. And then the son of perdition rules another 42 months. And we found out that, yeah, 42 months, because I was thinking that was three and a half years. That would equal that total of the seven-year heptad. Uh, it's also called a Shemitah. And it really brings you forward from that 480, whoops, sorry, 483 years that Israel was given a decree of how long God would punish and test Israel. It was a, a total of 490 years, right? Because that's 70 times 7, remember that? Equals that 490. Kind of doing it backwards, but that's okay. Just work with me here. So when Jesus came riding in Zechariah 9, that clock stopped. At 483 years, then we still have 490 minus 83. I'm just going to do it backwards here. Equals 7. Oops. Equals. Like it doesn't go backwards. I know, but we're going to anyhow. So, and that 7 years is divided into 3 and a half and 3 and a half. So, man of sin, three and a half years, 42 months. Then the um, son of perdition rules that other 42 months, that other three and a half years. And that seven years is completed when you get to the 490th year that God decreed for Israel. And there was quite a few things, goals that he had for giving her was one of them. Um, so anyhow, thank you so much. Bye.